September 23rd at 6.30, and we have a roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Chafe has an excused absence this evening. Commissioner Dram? Here. Commissioner Kitsoni? Here. Commissioner Simons? I'm here. We are expecting Commissioner Zepko, but she has not arrived yet. Uh, Vice Chair Mendez? Here. And Chair Keller? Here. So we currently have a quorum of five commissioners present. Okay. And... Oh, let me just... Let's see. Uh, well, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Do you want to read the uh, COVID report? <laughs> Oh, sure. You want me to do that? I can I do that like for that. you. Yeah. Okay. I would like to state for the record that uh, this meeting is being conducted by teleconference pursuant to the Brown Act waiver, waivers provided for under the governor's executive order in response to the COVID-19 state of emergency. The agenda states that the public may view the meeting that is being live streamed online and on ETV channel 27 and provide comment by submitting an online comment form, which will then be read into the record by staff. The comment form can be accessed by going to our main city of Emeryville website at www.emeryville.org and then navigating to the Planning Commission page. Once there, once there, you will see a link entitled Submit an Online Speaker Card. The public also has the option of participating in tonight's meeting via Zoom and may provide public comment during the meeting using the Raise Your Hand feature visible on your screen, or if you are calling in, press star 9. The Zoom call-in information was provided on the posted agenda, and there is a link on the Planning Commission agenda page as well. All right, thank you. So we're going on to item three, which is Commission Matters. Right. Um, I'm looking to see if... Uh, Christine Thompson is in the audience. I see a, there was a raised hand, but it disappeared. Pads Berkeley, is that Christine? I will allow this person to talk so we can find out who they are. Yeah, hi, it's me. Oh, hi, you're Pads Berkeley? I am, I'm using my office thing. Okay, good. I do not see Tito in the attendees. So, former Commissioner Young, if you are in the list of attendees, please raise your hand. Uh, do not see him. You did say right. you had gotten, you said you didn't hear from him, right? Correct, he did not confirm his attendance at tonight's meeting. Okay. So. I haven't been on this side. <laughs> <laughs> it's not much different, is it? Well, I don't see myself, that's all. Um, oh, wait, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, I should have done that. <laughs> you, I just promoted you to a panelist, so you should be able to, uh, to use your, use your, your video on? Use your there, video there on. she is. Out on the lake. Oh, yeah. Would you like me to go ahead with the resolution, Chair Kelly? Would you please? All right, we have a resolution for former Chair Thompson. Um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna bring it up, um, mm. and I'm going to share my screen so that you can all see it. Um, All right, can everybody see that? Yes. I know it's a little small, so I will enlarge it, but I just wanted you to see the whole thing first. Uh, and now you can read along with me if you like. This is resolution CPC number CST21-01, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Emeryville expressing the commission's sincere appreciation to Christine Scott Thompson for her service on the Emeryville Planning Commission. Whereas on February 21st, 2017, the City Council appointed Christine Scott Thompson to serve on the Emeryville Planning Commission for a term commencing on March 15, 2017 and ending on June 30, 2018, to fill the vacancy created by the election of Commissioner John J. Bowders to the City Council. 
And whereas Christine was reappointed to the commission by the City Council on July 10th, 2018, to a three-year term ending on June 30th, 2021, and whereas Christine did not seek reappointment to the commission in 2021, because she had, has moved out of Emeryville, making her ineligible to continue to serve on the commission. And whereas Christine served as vice chair of the Planning Commission from July 2019 to June 2020, and as chair of the commission from July 2020 to June 2021, and now I'm gonna take a deep breath because this is a long one. Whereas Christine's term on the commission uh, during Christine's term on the Commission, a number of major development projects were approved by the Commission, including two cannabis dispensaries and several cannabis manufacturing facilities, the final development plans for the new buildings, open space, and public park, and the adaptive reuse of existing Building 131 in the Sherwin-Williams Mixed-Use Project, the subdivision map for the Sherwin-Williams Mixed-Use Project, the Emeryville Center for the Arts, the Adeline Springs Residential Project, the Marketplace Parcel B Research and Development Lab Building, and the final development plan for the Biomed Emeryville Center of Innovation. And study sessions were held on the 5850 Shellmount Residential Project, the San Pablo Affordable Apartments, Emeryville's first SB35 project, the 3637 Adeline Supportive Housing Project, potentially Emeryville's second SB35 project, the Emory Station Overland Research and Development Lab Building, the 1225 65th Street Multi-Unit Residential Project, the 4700 San Pablo Avenue Mixed Use Project, and the massive Ani Mixed Use Project, which was later abandoned. And Christine played an active role in the deliberations on these and many other projects. Where during Christine's term on the commission, a number of long range planning efforts were reviewed and or recommended for approval by the commission and adopted by the city council, including the local hazard mitigation plan update 2017-2022, consideration of amendments to the noise ordinance, 40th and San Pablo bus hub and redesign of 40th street, parking management plan, consideration of planning regulation amendments on unit mix and design, tower separation and development impact fees, review of the city's capital improvement program, elimination of minimum parking standards uh, requirements, bird safe building standards, accessory dwelling unit regulations, the pedestrian and bicycle plan scope of work, objective development standards, and cannabis regulation amendments. And Christine played an active role in the deliberations on all of these efforts. And whereas Christine confidently and efficiently guided the commission, mostly most recently as chair, her expertise in planning, her thoughtful remarks on balancing energy efficiency and sustainability with good design, and her attention to detail, to, I'm sorry, to both overall vision and detail made her presence on the commission invaluable. And whereas Christine never missed an opportunity to remind applicants about the Emeryville design guidelines and to urge them to incorporate the guidelines into their projects, and whereas Christine's thoughtful and insightful comments and wisdom on a variety of long range and current planning issues will be greatly missed, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Commission hereby expresses its sincere appreciation to Christine Scott Thompson for her outstanding service to the city of Emeryville and its citizens and wishes her the best of luck in all of her future endeavors approved by the Planning Commission of the city of Emeryville at a regular meeting held on Thursday, September 23rd, 2021 and signed virtually by all of the commissioners and staff. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's quite a list. You, you know, it just proves that Emeryville has been very busy. Yes, it has. Your leadership is greatly appreciated. <laughs> we, we sure miss you. But are you enjoying your new house? I am. I am. I, it's, I still feel like a, a very much a part of Emeryville, though. It's, it's, a funny, it's funny to be right across the border. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still are. So, Charlie, do we need a motion for the resolution to be accepted, or do we just... Uh, I suppose we could do that if you wish. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make the motion that there's further resolution. Okay. I'll second that. All right, moved by Chair Keller and seconded by Vice Chair Mendez. Commissioner Chafe is absent. Commissioner Dram? Aye. Commissioner Dram, aye. Uh, Commissioner Gizzoni? Aye. Commissioner Simons? Aye. Commissioner Zepko is absent. Uh, Vice Chair Mendez. Aye. And Chair Keller. Aye. Five ayes. It's unanimous. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, and thanks again, Christine. 
Yeah, thank you very, thank you very much. And I, I did want to just say um, thanks to Commissioner Mendez, Keller, and Simons, which I had the privilege to um, serve with. Um, and then, uh, you know, great to see some, some new faces, uh, Commissioner Gazzoni <laughs> and Dram. Um, great to see you guys filling in. Okay, thank you so um, much. Should we dispense with reading uh, Commissioner Young's resolution since he's not here? Yeah, we've all gotten copies of it, right? Right, and it's pretty similar to Christine's, except that it's not as lengthy because <laughs> he was not on the commission as long. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right, with that. All right okay. very good. Thank well, good, so good luck with the rest of the agenda. <laughs> Thank you. There's a fair amount. Okay. <laughs> there is. And it was great, great to get the, the staff. It was wonderful to serve with staff, um, Charlie and Maru and others. Thank you, Christine. It was a pleasure serving with you as well, working with you as well. All right, I, I will uh, move you back to the attendance room if you don't mind. No worries. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> At least I tried to, but there we go. Okay, that worked. Okay, and then we're on to item 3.2, the uh, meeting schedule for 2.2. Yes, thank you, Chair Keller, members of the Commission, you have in front of you a chart that, or you have in your packet a chart of the meeting dates and associated other dates for 2022. Uh, as per the Commission's past practice and the roster approved by the City Council, the meeting dates are on the fourth Thursday of each month, except November and December, when they are on the, the combined into a single meeting on the second Thursday of December to avoid conflicts with the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. We have taken into account city holidays and major religious observances in developing this calendar. Um, none of the Planning Commission meeting dates conflicts with any city holidays or major religious observances. Where other dates conflict uh, with city holidays, they've been noted and adjusted accordingly on the chart. So with that, staff recommends that you adopt the chart for meeting dates for 2022. Sounds good. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Any concerns? Do we need a motion to accept that, or do we just? Uh, I think that would be that would be appreciated. Okay, we have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept it. And a second. I'll second that. Thank you, John. <clears throat> okay, on the motion to approve the 2022 meeting calendar. Commissioner Chafe is absent. Commissioner Dram. Yep. Uh, Take that as an aye. Commissioner aye. Kitsoni? Aye. Commissioner Simons? Aye. Commissioner Zepko is not arrived yet. Uh, Vice Chair Mendez? Aye. And Chair Keller? Aye. Five ayes. The calendar is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to move on to the public comments section. Now, this is the time for the public to address the commission with comments on items that are not on tonight's agenda. If you'd like to come forward, we will have three minutes to hear your comments. Do you, want me to, do you want me to read the COVID part of the, the public comment, COVID part of the script? Do we want to do that or do you, have a, do you want to wait and see if we have anybody who wants to comment? Oh, uh, well, okay. Um, let me see. I received two uh, online speaker cards earlier in the day, but they were not for general comments. They were on specific agenda items. Right. I'm checking my email. I do not see any online speaker cards for general comments. I do, not, I do not see any raised hands in the attendees. Okay. So I would say there are no public comments. So we can skip the script and move on. So I will close the public comment period and move on to the approval of the minutes from our meeting of August, what is the date? 26. August 26th. And I do have one correction, uh, oh, yeah. Charlie, that you, you read the COVID script, not I. All right, so in the first line, we'll change yeah. it from the chair to the director. Exactly. Read aloud a statement, et cetera. That's the only thing I had. Is there any other corrections or omissions? Anyone wants to bring forward? Okay. Not seeing any. We'll 
move on to... Uh -huh. We need a motion and a second and a vote. Oh, we do. <laughs> I'll make the motion to get the ball rolling. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I'll second that. Who's gonna? <laughs> who's we'll, we'll, take, we'll take Henry's second. On that. All right, all right. Um, moved by Chair Keller, seconded by Commissioner Simons. Um, Commissioner Chafe is absent. Commissioner Dram. Uh, aye. Commissioner Gizzoni. Aye. Commissioner Simons. Commissioner Simons. Aye. Right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Zepko is uh, still not here. Uh, Vice Chair Mendez. Aye. And Chair Keller. Aye. Five eyes. The minutes are approved with that one minor correction. Thank you. All right. And we will go on to the director's report. Thank you, uh, Chair Keller and members of the Planning Commission. Um, <clears throat> with regard to City Council actions, they have had one meeting since your last meeting, and that was on September 13th. Uh, at that meeting, the Council approved the issuance of annual cabaret permits to the public market, Rob Ben's restaurant and Trader Vic's restaurant so that those venues can now continue to have live music for another year. The council passed the second reading of a reach code amending the building codes to require new residential buildings to be all electric and to install solar panels in the so-called solar zone on the roofs of buildings uh, up to 10 stories. The council also approved the public art committee's recommendation for a mural by Nigel Sussman at 1451 Sherwin Avenue which is at the corner of Horton Street uh, on the eastern end of the northern wall of the large industrial building that is across the street from the Sherwin-Williams project. And uh, finally, the council set a public hearing date of October 5th to consider the appeal of the Planning Commission's June 24th denial of the proposed modifications to the Art Center project. And in other news, speaking of art, just a reminder, uh, that the annual Emeryville Celebration of the Arts Exhibition is coming up in October. It'll be the entire month, the 2nd through the 31st. And it will be held in the former Gap Store space at 5690 Bay Street. The opening uh, reception will be about a week uh, from tonight, a week and a day from tonight on Friday, October 1st from 6 to 9 p.m. And if you haven't been to the open reception, opening reception of the art show, I strongly encourage you to attend. Of course, last year it was virtual. This year it is in person. I assume with social distancing and certainly with masks, but it is the event of the season. So uh, you really should go if, if you can do so. Uh, finally, I told you last month that I would report back on developments on that front. And so uh, this is that report. As you may have heard, the state has passed a new law called AB 361, which allows us to continue to hold virtual meetings for the duration of the state of emergency. Um, however, it requires the Planning Commission to make certain findings um, to declare the need for virtual meetings. These findings need to be made at every commission meeting that is held by teleconference. So starting in October, your meetings will continue to be via Zoom, and the first item on every agenda will be a Planning Commission resolution making the required findings to allow the meeting to be held by teleconference. We anticipate that this will continue to be the situation at least for the October and December meetings, and probably for some period of time into 2022 until the state of emergency is over. So no change in the meeting format, uh, but just the addition of this one item at the front of every agenda where you will need to vote to hold the meeting by teleconference. And that concludes my report. I'd be happy to respond to any questions. Very good, thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission? Go ahead, Erin. I have a question. Yes, um, Charlie, do we have to RSVP for the opening um, night of the, the no. show? <clears throat> no. No, okay. anybody can go. Okay, thank just, you. Just okay. show up. Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. That. See anything else? We'll move on. Um, both items under uh, section eight have been continued. Is that correct, Charlie? That is correct. Okay. 
Okay, so we will be skipping items 8.1 and 8.2, which will be on future uh, commission agendas. So we will move on to OX oh, parte communications. Uh, there any, I, I can kick this off. Um, I have had communications on two um, different dates with the owned uh, Center Cal uh, property on the Bay Street project. Are there any other? I believe we have a couple of conflicts. Yeah, I'm here. Yes. So, um, so I have a conflict of interest with uh, study session 9.1, the marketplace redevelopment. Um, my primary residence is in a marketplace development. It's um, APN number 49-1556-9. And additionally, um, as another conflict of interest, my employer um, has been involved in the alternate study that was provided, I believe it was in 2019, for that same project. So, um, Vice Chair, you don't own your unit, do you? Are you renting? We're renting, right. Okay, so that doesn't, that doesn't require her to recuse because she's not a property owner, is that correct? Council? Not necessarily. Um, the rules for renting are different, you're correct. Um, but if uh, Commissioner Mendez's, uh, if the project could affect the uh, Commissioner Mendez's rent um, amounts, then she should recuse herself. And um, so that would be, that's the consideration. Um, it's, it's if the project is going to or could reasonably re uh, affect the rate of rent. Um, but it sounds like Commissioner Mendez has a conflict otherwise. So um, right. even yeah. if her, even if the uh, rental issue wasn't enough, it sounds like she has another conflict. Okay, and also, uh, Commissioner Gutsoni, you're also going to need to recuse? Yes, Oxford Property Groups is a client of my employer, so I believe that would create a conflict there. So that leaves us with three commissioners. We don't have a quorum to hear this item. Well, let me ask uh, Christy about that. We have five commissioners present, and two of them are conflicted out, so that leaves three. Is that sufficient? for a study session, or do we need four? Which no, is we a need a quorum. Of the we need a quorum, quorum of the full membership. Of the membership to hear, I mean, to act on any item, although I, this is a study session. Um, I, Charlie, did you try to contact Commissioner Zepko? Yes, I At the beginning of the meeting? Well, not, no, I just did. You just did, okay. Yes. Maybe um, perhaps uh, Commissioner Keller, um, or Chair Keller, could you ask the Commission if it would be okay to reorder the two items and then we could potentially contact Commissioner Zepco again and um, Marketplace could go second instead of first? Yes, that was that was plan B. So okay. does the remaining commissioners of the Commissioner Dram and Commissioner Simons do you uh, have a problem if we move item two up the list to item one? I have no problem with that. That's fine. <clears throat> and Commissioner just to clarify, Commissioners Gizzoni and Vice Chair Mendez uh, don't have conflicts on this item, right? And neither does Chair Keller. So we have five commissioners for the Bay Street grocery store item. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and move that item up. And then we'll hopefully hear from Commissioners input before we get back to the Bay Street. Perfect. And, and I, I understand we may need a little break for staff to switch things around and um, if we need to take one. That's fine. Also, the applicant as well. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Uh oh. Miru, are you about ready? You yes, muted. I'm ready. Okay. Something's going on with my computer. I'm sorry, but you can go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen.
Can everyone see my screen here? Yes. I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to have to momentarily leave the Zoom meeting. And since I'm the host, I hope it doesn't stop it. Uh, but it's frozen on my computer. I'm sorry. So hopefully you'll be able to continue. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll wait till you come back and check in again. <laughs> okay. Charlie, you're fine. Uh, since I'm the co-host, you should be fine. Oh, right. Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you, Ty. All right. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so good evening, uh, Chair Keller, Commission. Uh, this item is the Bay Street Grocery Store. As part of a little bit of a background, uh, the Bay Street PUD was approved by the council back in September 1999 uh, on a 19-acre parcel, and subsequently FTPs for retail, entertainment, and residential uses were approved in 2000. Uh, later on, more recently, West Elm uh, Furniture Store FTP was approved in 2007, which is uh, where it says Pad 1, and the Hyde House Hotel FTP was approved in 2014, uh, right here. The Pad number 2 is currently vacant. So what we are going to be talking about today is uh, Parcel B, or the building that currently houses EQ3 Furniture Store and some other retail stores, and that formerly housed Old Navy Store and the Elephant Bar. Uh, so Barnes & Nobles is here, and this is the uh, building that will be demolished in order to accommodate uh, the proposed FTP project. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is a, a building, the existing building will be demolished. It's uh, 49, a uh, little over 49,000 square feet. Uh, and the new building would be a new grocery store, uh, which would be roughly the same size, slightly smaller, uh, st sitting at 48,000 square feet. Uh, the project is also going to in involve removal of this plaza area in front of Barnes and Nobles and the existing building. And the project is also going to involve opening of Bay Street, this portion, which is currently closed to vehicular traffic. And this would be opening to the Bay Street uh, vehicular traffic in order to accommodate uh, the circulation for the project. So zooming into uh, the site a little bit more, this is the existing building. Uh, a few things are happening. Uh, first, I would like to mention uh, tree removal. Uh, there are four trees here uh, that are to be removed, and there are four palm trees that are proposed to be relocated onto the site, which is right here. Uh, in terms of loading, and uh, loading is, current loading occurs out, uh, occurs off shell mount, and in the proposed site plan, it will be also shell, uh, off shell mount, but will be covered uh, in the grocery store. As I mentioned earlier, this plaza area is going to be uh, removed, and, and what is being proposed is uh, a little uh, surface parking and a bulb out plaza area here. Uh, there will also be some teaser parking in front of the grocery store. This is the floor plan uh, of the proposed uh, store. Uh, the entry to the store is at the corner of Bay Street, well, at the corner, essentially, uh, and, and there will be rooftop parking. Uh, there are going to be, uh, in terms of circulation, we'll be showing you next. And this is the circulation. So essentially, uh, if you're in your car, you're going to, you have several ways to approach the store. One is through the uh, ramp here, uh, or you could keep going down Bay Street, uh, either park on the teaser parking, or move further and enter the rooftop parking through here. There's only one exit of the roof par rooftop parking, and that would be at this location right here. This kind of shows the uh, trash and loading, which I'd mentioned occurs uh, off shell mount. Uh, obviously, we will be doing a traffic study to ensure that this actually works. And as I mentioned, in terms of landscaping and other plaza features, they are bulbing out this area in front of this grocery store and having a few trees here. These are the three, uh, the three uh, palm trees which will be relocated and some new trees. I'll note that all the trees that will be removed are on private property and as such does not require a tree removal permit. 
However, uh, our planning regulations does have a provision uh, for the commission if they want the healthy on-site trees to be preserved and incorporated into the project, uh, this can be done uh, unless the applicant proves that it is unfeasible to do so. So in terms of how this would look in our rendering, this is the bulb up that I was talking about. Uh, there are some seatings, there's the canopy, and uh, there's also uh, an external stairs through which uh, the public can uh, enter and leave uh, the rooftop parking. Uh, this is the elevation of the grocery store uh, in order to minimize duplications. I'm going to let uh, the applicant's presentation talk about the various uh, materials and the design concept for the building. And this is looking uh, north. This is the theaters. Uh, this is the on-site on ramp. And as you can see, this portion of the Bay Street, which is currently close to vehicular traffic, will be open. Uh, can we, are we hearing, uh, Charlie here? Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we yeah, he doesn't mute his mic. I think he's trying to call 30. Okay. We're good. Okay. Now. There you go. All right. So these are the elevations. Uh, the top one is the elevation, uh, which is the main elevation facing Barnes and Nobles and the plaza. And this is along Bay Street. Uh, the top elevation is the Ohlone Way. I uh, will note that all the uh, landscaping that you are seeing is existing and it will remain as it is. Uh, no changes are being proposed. <clears throat> In addition to the store, the part of the FTP also includes uh, some improvements on Ohlone Way. Ohlone Way right now looks like this. So what they are proposing essentially is to have create an, it's, it's a road diet essentially, where one uh, vehicular lane traffic is uh, converted into a multi-use path, which will connect the bridge uh, to Bay Street and Shellmount Street. And this is the rendering for this location and with the a proposed improvement to the street. So in terms of conformance uh, with the PDP, uh, in terms of the land use, it involves replacement of different types of retail stores uh, with a new uh, retail store, which would be grocery store. Uh, as the type of the use remains the same and the size is approximately the same, uh, the use and the size are consistent with the PDP. In terms of parking, uh, it includes provision of uh, 112 parking spaces on the rooftop. This is additional parking that is not contemplated by the PDP as parking for the retail entertainment users is provided within the existing garage. However, this is not considered to be inconsistent with the PDP since it does not alter the use or general size of the building on that parcel. Uh, just as a way of figuring out what would be the maximum parking allowed by today's uh, parking standards, it would be 213 parking spaces. In terms of the, the plaza, the project involves, as I mentioned, removal of the plaza between the Barnes and Nobles building and parcel B and, and replacement with some surface parking and allowing for vehicular circulation. Uh, the BTP plans do delineate this area as plaza and provide a section drawing showing the plaza width to be 60 feet in addition to an adjacent roadway that is 54 feet. And this is, uh, these are old plants that you can see. Uh, this is the plaza area, and uh, this is a section of the plaza. Uh, the applicant suggests that the removal of this plaza is compensated for by a smaller plaza area near the new building, the enhanced plaza area at the bridge building, a bridge landing, enhanced food terrace area that they are working on right now, and future activation of spaces along the northern portion of Bay Street. Nonetheless, staff believes that the removal of the existing plaza area is significant deviation from the PDP and would require an amendment to the PDP. One potential way to avoid PDP amendment would be uh, instead of opening up the Bay Street to vehicular traffic, leave this open. Uh, however, uh, but so that at the same time, uh, retain the on-site ramp, which they feel is necessary for the parking and the circulation, and also retain uh, the teaser parking, 
this would and converting this into a plaza area this is one possible way that uh, staff or the commission could consider uh, by avoiding a P, uh, pdp amendment these are the findings uh, that one needs to make when you do an amendment to the pdp i'm not going to walk you through but it's to suggest to say that the findings for an amendment to a, a pud pdp are more substantial than uh, findings of ftp which is basically consistency to the pdp uh, in terms of staff comments this was this was reviewed by uh, different departments at a dcc meeting this month uh, the EDH and city manager's office noted that there is a high vacancy rate at Bay Street right now and a grocery store is typically known to trigger revitalization of a mall. Uh, grocery store proprietors are aware of this and tend to demand a store configuration, provision of parking and a circulation pattern that is tailored to their needs. Uh, public Works staff noted that the proposed circulation and opening of the south end of Bay Street to vehicular traffic would create increased conflicts between vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. They also noted that the transportation study is likely to identify a need for a traffic signal at Bay Street and Oloni Way. Police staff stated that the existing circulation creates multimodal congestion during busy weekends and holiday seasons, and that the proposal would further exacerbate this situation. Uh, given the identified motor conflicts and the applicant's proposal for the two vehicular entries into the building, plus teaser surface parking in front of the building, it is it was suggested that the relocated plaza concept could be a compromise that would retain these features and still provide a large pedestrian uh, plaza space. Alameda County Fire noted that the applicant needed to verify whether the proposed cycle track addition along Oloning Way would meet the turning radius uh, needed for fire access. The environmental services staff also noted that the project would need to provide a discards plans as, as, the forger, uh, as the project is further refined and the project would need to comply with the applicable uh, stormwater provisions. Uh, public works staff noted that the relocation of palm trees is ill-advised because trees typically do not do well if relocated and suggested that the trees be replaced with other species in the proposed new locations. In terms of next steps, uh, the review by BPAC uh, will occur uh, uh, next month. And there is a city council study session uh, scheduled for October 19th. And a community meeting at some point will be held uh, and organized by the applicant. In terms of issues uh, to be considered by the commission, uh, as I mentioned, the proposal involves removal of the plaza area and the opening of the south end of Bay Street to vehicular traffic. Uh, does the commission support, support such an amendment? Second is concerns the relocated plaza. Does the commission agree with staff's suggestion of keeping Bay Street closed to the vehicular traffic south of the proposed rooftop parking entry ramp and creating a new relocated plaza in this area? Uh, of course, any comments on the choice of materials, color, and proposed designs um, are welcome at this time. And regarding the trees, uh, does the commission agree uh, with the proposed plans regarding relocating uh, palm trees? So, and of course, any other issues that the commission uh, may have uh, regarding this project. So that concludes uh, my presentation. And after hearing a presentation from the applicant and receiving public uh, testimony, uh, staff uh, request the Planning Commission to provide comments on the issues noted above. And I'm okay. happy to answer any question at this time. Very good, thank you, Maru. Um, I don't have any questions. Do the non-recused commissioners have any questions? Commissioner Simons? Oh, we don't have any recused here. I'm sorry, that's correct. Er, uh, Vice Chair Mendez. Yes, Maru, I have two questions. I don't know if I might have missed it, but was there a reason given for the tree removal? The tree removal, they are in front of the circulation. So uh, the tree, the three palm trees are right in front of where the entry and exit to the rooftop uh, occurs. And uh, and the and the trees on Shell Mound are it's just the configuration of the building footprint. Okay, thank you. And then my 
second question is, um, is, is there, um, and maybe this might be for the applicant, but was there a reason or an explanation why the building needed to be demolished instead of being reused? Uh, I think the applicant would be better uh, informed to see the, answer this question. Okay, great. Thank you. That was it. Thank you, Vice Chair. Anyone else have any questions for staff? Okay, if not, um, we'll move on to the presentation by the uh, applicant. Charlie, do you want me to name uh, the different names? Sorry, my Zoom is acting wonky tonight. Uh, no, I have the list here. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry. Uh, I have seven people that I'm going to be promoting uh, to the uh, panel to address you, so bear with me for a few minutes. I'm going to have to uh, go through this list and promote all these people. slow to respond. Um, who is missing? Craig Ramey, Chelsea McLean, Jill Nichols, uh, Marco Esposito, Barry Burpin. Did I promote him? Oh yeah, there we go. Eric Price, is he there? Don't see him, hang on. Yeah, Eric and, is there. Eric oh, okay. Is there. Oh, okay, and Ken Lowney, is Ken Lowney there? Did I did I miss him? No, oh, yeah, 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 he's there. Uh, I'm just missing Ken Lowney. Is Ken Lowney there? Nope. Oh, here he is. Okay, I see him in the agenda list. Sorry, he was hiding. Okay, that should be everybody. Thank you. I'll get I'll get us started. Uh, first, Charlie, thanks for promoting me. You know, I haven't been promoted in a long time, so that the sound the sound of that is pretty good. You know, I like the terminology. Such such power. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, good evening, Planning Commissioners. Uh, my name is Craig Ramey, and I'm excited to be presenting uh, on behalf of Center Cal Properties. Um, also, really excited for the Emeryville. Uh, annual celebration of the arts at Bay Street. You know, that's something that we're really excited to partner with um, with your team and, and uh, can't wait for that to get started. Um, before you hear our presentation from a very engaged and experienced team, I wanted to give a brief introduction and provide some background on the short but very busy time evaluating and ultimately closing and ownership of Bay Street. Center Cal Properties has a long-standing commitment to creating thriving shopping centers that serve our communities. Our primary goal is to design gathering places that will strengthen the social fabric of our neighborhoods, ultimately creating prosperity and a strong sense of community. Center Cal honors the customer by providing the best experience possible through design, restaurants, and retailers, and amenities and enhance the surrounding neighborhoods. In late two 2020, when we engaged with prior ownership to evaluate Bay Street, we were so excited about the opportunity to change the narrative 
and make the necessary physical, operational, and merchandising changes that are needed to retain existing tenants, bring in new tenants, and transform the project to a modern, thriving center. The headwinds are face, we are facing are significant, including the following. One, significant tenant closures and declining occupancy, and this started well before COVID-19. Existing tenants that have given notice that if changes, improvements are not made, they will close. We are doing all we can to assure existing tenants that help is on the way. You will hear about that, our progress during the presentation this evening. Bay Street is dated and in need of physical upgrades and a modern merchandising plan to include grocery and introduce food and beverage along North Bay Street to serve the needs of the local and regional customer base. Today, we have made major commitment to improve security and operational shortcomings, including plans to replace all lights in the parking garage, painting and striping the interior of the garage, upgrading security and security cameras, and painting the exterior of the garage and the EMC buildings, which has started. These may seem like little items, but important to show tenants and stakeholders that we are committed to making change. These changes, while significant, are only the very beginning of what is needed to execute the vision. Thank you for taking the time to review the, our application and your presentation this evening. We have assembled a best in class team of architects and design professionals from Gensler, Lowney and SWA group to create a vision for the project. I will now turn it over to Jill to begin our presentation. Thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Jill Nichols. I'm with Center Cal and I have over 30 years of experience creating relevant retail properties. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully you can all see what I'm sharing. Can I get a confirmation? All right, great. Well, our project is really revitalizing Bay Street to be safe, to be active and easily accessible and to serve the daily needs of what we all know is a growing and expanding neighborhood. Bay Street will be an enjoyable place to shop, to live, to work and to play. We need to pivot an underutilized property through site activations. And the design that we are sharing with you today will establish unique gathering spaces that are balanced across the site and offer activity options throughout the day and the night. With our proposed food terrace as a common living space, it'll be used for food and beverage, entertainment, fireside gatherings, and family fun. We'll provide easy to navigate site access for both pedestrians, bicyclists, as well as ride sharing and personal vehicles through the Greenway expansion. We'll diversify the streets, streetscape scale with architecture, landscaping, signage, and art to encourage a more authentic local and regional expression. We often also want to offer a wide range of program elements to encourage community interaction and engagement opportunities for a variety of visitors throughout our site. We have parklets that are intended for work, parklets for meeting spaces, and parklets just to sit and observe. And on the north end, more outside dining. Our collective vision will achieve this. However, none of these proposed elements are successful to live on their own. And one thing that has been proven through COVID is the value of distributed gathering over single large gatherings. So we've designed purposeful touchdown spaces throughout our property. Now our collective experience with the people on the call tonight are proved in that food and beverage and groceries are tested solutions for revitalizing centers. The grocery will drive footfall, it will serve the needs of current and future visitors with the soon to be open bridge and a well functioning grocery is what ties this entire site revitalization together. So tonight we're here to touch on our previously submitted food terrace, which will be a newly activated gathering space, but our focus is on the FTP for the grocery the Emeryville Greenway extension and the bridge landing plaza. 
We will provide a glimpse into our future phases to help you understand our entire vision. So our project for this workshop is the grocery. But we're creating an urban environment addressing the needs of pedestrians and cyclists. Here on the left, you see the food terrace, the grocery, the bridge landing, and the greenway extension. We're reactivated underused, underutilized spaces. We need to expand and activate the people space. While noted, the plaza that's currently there will be smaller in front of the grocery. We believe the distributed gathering across our entire project site will allow us in excess of three times the existing area for people activation. We've proposed, as we'll shortly tell you more about, a much larger plaza at the bridge landing, a transformed food terrace common area, which will be a go-to place to gather, activating entertainment and food and family. The Greenway extension, the new parklets along North Bay, the outdoor gathering at Christie, and an additional gathering at Brunswick will absolutely, we believe, conform substantially with our PDP. So taken together again, the expanded people space area is in excess of three times when we're considering the entire site plan. So we're gonna tell you a little bit, just briefly, about what we've already submitted for, food, for the food uh, terrace permit. So Barry, take it away. Yes. Hi, thanks, Joel, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Nice to meet everyone. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Barry Bourbon, a principal at Gensler. Um, I also have over 30 years of professional experience really focused in on retail architecture. Um, I also have a direct history on the project, and actually over the past four years, I've worked with the previous ownership. Um, and unfortunately, during this time, I've continued to see the center's overall decline and appeal with many continuing vacancies. So I'm really excited to be a part of Center Cal's vision for reinvention at Bay Street. And I agree that the existing condition re requires a substantial catalyst for change. And as we are seeing tonight, I think the new anchor grocery uh, proposal really does bring that change to Bay Street. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the food terrace and what's proposed. Actually, the original PDP did not include um, much discussion at all about the terrace. There is a reference to indoor-outdoor dining venues near the cinema complex. But I'd like to describe to you tonight what we are newly um, envisioning as a community and social activation concept for this space. So as you can see by the current uh, conditions on the next slide, there, there's really no utilization of this prime space. And please keep in mind that the prospect of the adjacent grocery anchor has led to a lot of interest from food and beverage tenants in the terrace. So this pairing of daily needs and social offerings are really essential in driving the activation and attracting successful retailers actually to the rest of Bay Street. So I fear without the grocery anchor, there's decreased viability in the terrace happening successfully. So a little bit about the features of the terrace, it will feature a remodeled grand stair, which will be highly visible and easily accessible accessible to the grocery shoppers due to the removal of an existing overhead bridge element. And the terrace is actually directly adjacent to where staff was proposing the plaza on Bay Street. So this elevated outdoor space, which was previously reserved for restaurant tenants and circulation uh, without really public gathering space, will now offer an outdoor living room environment open to all. Highlights include windscreens, fireplace, a highly um, flexible hospitality furnishing system, um, fire tables and areas for games and music and other programmed community activities. So we envision the accommodation of more than 200 seats within a much more comfortable, safe and popular outdoor experience for those who live 
and work nearby to hang out and just enjoy life. So thanks for hearing about the terrace. I'd like to turn it over to Ken Lowney. Thanks, Barry. Uh, my name is Ken Lowney. Uh, and I'm with Lowney Architecture, and I have my colleague Eric Price with me also. For the past 20 years, my firm has been designing projects just like this, so infill grocery stores um, all across the country, Canada, uh, primarily focused in California and Hawaii. Perhaps you've shopped at some of the stores we've designed in the immediate Bay Area, in Berkeley, Oakland, Albany, uh, Burlingame, Los Gatos, and Walnut Creek. Uh, in all of those locations, the grocery store added uh, more foot traffic, increased the sales of the adjacent retailers, uh, and sort of made the whole surrounding neighborhoods more robust. So we know the positive effects that grocery stores have uh, on neighborhoods and projects. The context of the, of the grocery store uh, is as indicated on this on this uh, plan, and we're keeping many of the, the great parts of, of Bay Street intact. Obviously, the daylight at Temesville Creek and the new bridge, which is just completed. But we're adding a lot of other great stuff. Um, bait, the, the bridge landing um, plaza, which Marco will talk about in a minute, and this, this uh, multi-purpose path connecting the bridge um, along to Shell Mound and across to other bike paths throughout um, Oakland, Emeryville, and the East Bay. On the left-hand side is the existing conditions of the building. And of course, you know, when we, when we first looked at this, we thought, oh, well, how can we keep the building? Uh, and so there are two reasons why we had to demolish the building. We have to demolish the building. The first one is the structure. Um, the structure is too low, and the, and the structural spacing is too narrow for a grocery use. It needs high ceilings uh, and lots of space for uh, display. And secondly, grocery stores require um, adequate uh, and accessible immediately adjacent parking. So the parking has to be right there. It can't be across the street. It can't be down the road. It has to be literally right there for it to work, for a growth to attract the tenant to, to run their business. So those two reasons require that we demolish the building. On the upside, uh, number three on the left on the drawing here shows the existing loading dock and we're actually gonna keep that loading dock for a couple reasons. Uh, it works, number one, um, and we've proven it works with our auto uh, truck uh, paths that we use for all of our stores. And also, it keeps the truck outside of the uh, pedestrian areas all along Bay Street and Ohlone, uh, Ohlone Way. So um, it's really the right place for the loading dock. So where do we put the parking? And so the parking, you can put it on top or you can put it underneath with such a compact site. Um, putting the parking on top is more beneficial because it puts the store on the ground floor where people see it and you get some interaction with all the activity happening. On the left is the rooftop parking plan. Uh, and you can see there's a ramp at the top uh, indicated by the, the number one. Underneath that is bike parking. The secondary ramp that goes from the bottom of the page up um, and that's a two lane ramp up and both the whole rooftop parking exits um, down that the ramp I just described down to Bay Street South uh, and out over to Shell Mound. All of the uh, customers will go to the corner on the right where you have uh, both stairs and the elevators going down to the entrance. And the entrance is on the corner at the modified plaza, which we'll talk about in a minute. So grocery stores have certain things that they need. <clears throat> they need to be visible. You have to see where they are. They need to have loading that works, that's, that you can get trucks in and out of, um, and adequate clearances and whatnot. Um, as I mentioned, the parking has to work. But wayfinding is key. How do you get into the store? How do you get out of the store? How do you park? Um, the more foolproof you make it, the more successful the store will be, the more people will come, and the more beneficial effects, uh, which we're trying to achieve, will happen. So in other words, more people walking around, shopping, and having, having fun here. Um, and of course, uh, card storage is essential also. Now what this drawing shows you is many of the, of the customers will, will be coming by car. Of course, there'll be other people walking and biking, but many will come by car. And the red uh, line shows how they circulate on a one-way street around the store 
from Shell Mound onto Ohlone Way, along Bay Street, and back around. The first ramp up is just off Ohlone Way. It goes right up. Uh, and the second one is where I, I indicated before. Now, we can't close um, Bay Street um, for two reasons. One is, if there is a backup on that first ramp or someone's wait, you're waiting for a pedestrian or something, uh, you're stuck. And the queue will back up along Ohlone Way and out on the shell now. Um, or, and two, if, if you can't drive through Bay Street and you inadvertently make that right-hand turn, that means you're stuck going up onto the rooftop parking and you'll just add to the traffic on top of the roof. And more importantly, you'll make an unhappy visitor. So we're trying to make this as easy for people to visit as possible and to have this store to be as successful as we can make it. So it needs all these elements to work uh, and, and draw people in. This is looking down the, the newly opened Bay Street, which is, will have a more pedestrian focus because there is a, a, a speed table right in the foreground here with the, with the car is on. On the right hand side, you see the first ramp going up to the rooftop parking and all of this new uh, seating taking the place of those kiosks, the current kiosk, and uh, Marco will talk about that in, in just a minute. The idea here was have the building express, this is how you get in. This is the entrance of the building. So we tried to do that through material selections, you know, that the uh, dark materials, phenolic resin panels, the lighter material, metal, metal uh, skin, and it's all uh, aluminum door front. So at the entrance, which is on a corner, which is a more prominent part of the building, We've got two ways in, one on either side of the corner. The, the building masses up, becomes more vertical, we'll have signage there, but it also tells you that's how you go in. We've got a, a higher awning, and all the circulation leads you there. So the stairs come, the open stairs come down in a sculptural way, kind of point you to the front door, and the elevators on the right, the two dark portals, um, bring you down and right, you're right next to the front door. Uh, the elevators are pass-through elevators, so that means if you have a cart, and you put the way in, you're always going the right direction because it opens uh, in opposite directions when it's top and the bottom. This is a close up view of the, the modified plaza, uh, which is, you can see, is much more intimate and usable. We're providing different ways of interacting with the built environment, really nice landscaping, different kinds of furniture, um, and it's right in front of the entrance uh, where you can just immediately you know, come out with your grab and go. And, enjoy yourself. Um, we've really tried to uh, stay close to the uh, concepts in the PDP. So here you can see uh, some decorative paving. There's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, just, you know, integrated colors and, and saw cutting and things like that. And uh, adding um, landscaping throughout um, the, the project. On the left hand side, you can see we're adding seating also. So there's seating all around the entrance. Now consistent with the PDP uh, are, are elements that are visually interesting and inviting, different ways to use the space. So you've got different textures and materials, different ways to sit, different ways to be shaded, to park your bicycle, different kinds of street furniture, cultural planners, to really enliven uh, and make the space exciting uh, and inviting. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll just pass it on to Marco who will walk you through some of the landscape uh, elements. Thank you, Ken. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, Marco Esposito, principal at SWA Group. We're landscape architects and urban designers of outdoor spaces, streetscapes. Uh, and we've had the good fortune to work on uh, many outdoor spaces in the Bay Area, including places like Santana Row and others. Um, as Jill mentioned initially and Ken alluded to, we're really excited about weaving the grocery into Bay Street and also building on the amazing work that the city has done to create the greenway on the other side of the tracks and bring the bridge across the South Bayfront Bridge. You can see there the stairs on the left uh, coming down and then really picking up on the way that the Ohlone has been used for the past year during construction. As uh, Miru said, it's slimming the street so that it still has all the functionality, but uh, we're widening the pedestrian realm, the bicycle uh, realm to be able to extend the greenway through here all the way to the Bay Trail. So uh, this, uh, it, 
I'll show you in a moment kind of a before and after where you can see the amount of road space that is in excess of what the what is really needed functionally. This is the way it's worked for a year. And you can see there's a certain amount of uh, clutter and up and down. And if we bring, as Ken mentioned, if we bring the, uh, the drive south to the grocery up to sidewalk level for a short ways and back down again, we can truly capture this area at the confluence of the Greenway, the bridge, and Bay Street and create a really iconic place uh, that, you know, if we were designing this from scratch today and the bridge was there uh, when we were designing it, this is where you'd put the main space. So we're very excited about uh, activating this space and really glad that there's the way to do that. And we think it's gonna be exciting. We're showing a uh, outdoor fire table uh, on the side where you come down the stairs. So there's something really iconic there. Uh, you know, we're several, I'm sure many of you are Bay Area natives. We do have our cool evenings and this kind of extends life into the evening and winters uh, and having outdoor furniture uh, and really, you know, creating a people place where there is none. As, as Ken mentioned, there's a certain amount of retail kiosks that almost hide the Ohlone historic walk that's kind of off on the page right from this view. And we're kind of bringing that back to uh, very much a part of the experience of the Temescal Creek and the Greenway and Bay Street. So we think we really have a great opportunity to weave it all together in this space. Uh, and, you know, if, if the last year and a half has taught us anything is that outdoor space, uh, cities all across the Bay have been very inventive about creating outdoor space and there have been sort of uh, the, really the highlights of this kind of strange period that we've gone through is to have great outdoor space all along Bay Area Street. So we're excited to be bringing some of that energy all throughout Bay Street. Again, this is fully part of the project that we're describing to you. This is a bird's eye view that might again show you in a different way the idea of slimming the street uh, and creating the plaza and allowing the bridge and stairs and sloped walk to connect all the way to Shell Mound and onto the Bay Trail beyond. So we think it's really a fantastic uh, uh, new addition to another way to arrive to Bay Street from uh, all of the East uh, Emeryville across the tracks. In terms of uh, looking ahead, uh, these are not part of the project. But we're having fun looking at other opportunities north of Ohlone. Uh, we're looking at uh, adding parklets along Bay Street. We're looking at seeing how Bay Street can, uh, whether there's sort of some space that we can take that's a little bit of excess road space. We can throw it into the pedestrian realm to create outdoor seating, accommodate uh, new F&B tenants that are showing interest uh, in, in Craig's vision, Center Cal's vision. And so I'd like to show you a, little, a few before and afters of those. Again, we were involved in uh, Santana Row and other projects like this. Uh, and we think there's a lot of potential on the north part of Bay Street to doing the same thing. Here's the mid block of Brunswick Lane, two lanes on Bay Street and a good service access on the left. But you can see there's a lot of clutter and there's a lot of level changes. It's hard to use, frankly. If we bring up the uh, street up to sidewalk level in this area, we think that we can really use this area and allow all the vehicle movements that currently occur to continue, but really create a wonderful place mid-block. Uh, we have to remember that people are coming from all uh, sides of Emeryville and Shell Mound to Bay Street, so we like the idea of creating these activated spaces all along Bay Street. They're coming out of the garage portals all along Bay Street. So we, we love this idea about distributing the people energy along there. This is, if you're coming from Powell or from Northern Emeryville, you might arrive via Christie if you're driving or biking or walking. And this is the way you see uh, Bay Street now. You don't really get a sense of the, of the magic of Bay Street, which is just a block away. So we think that we can re-sculpt this area to extend the uh, pedestrian realm on the right side there to have outdoor dining for an F&B tenant, uh, to just bring the sense of Bay Street as a retail street all the way out to Shell Mound. Uh, and then even uh, in the interim condition, before there's development on the left, we think we can dress that up and just make a 
fantastic new arrival for the property. And then as, as Craig alluded to, uh, we're looking at uh, a certain amount of F and B tenants, which will uh, really give another reason to come to Bay Street. And this is at the very north end uh, and also looking at every opportunity to have spill out spaces for outdoor dining for these potential tenants. And so with that, I'd like to pass it back to Craig. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, planning commissioners, you can see, um, I enjoy working with this team. Um, very bright, highly motivated, lots of experience, a lot of great ideas. Um, in summary, we feel great about uh, the opportunity in front of us. I uh, appreciate your time. And on that, I'll throw it over to you for, uh, for questions. Thank you very much. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions for the project? For the applicant? Uh, I'm not seeing any hands. I just have one question for you. At Ohlone and Bay Street, where you're going to narrow the street and widen the pedestrian experience, add the two way cycle tracks. Do you agree with staff that we may need to uh, put in a signal to, to, to control that space? That's Craig, a question. I'm, Craig, I'm happy to take yeah, a Marco, shot. Go, Marco, go ahead. Okay. You know, I think that uh, it, it, it wouldn't be my, my intuition that that would be needed. Uh, as, we, as you know, the railroad tracks are kind of the end of the city grid locally in a general way, although with your investment in the uh, South Bayfront Bridge, we've got this fantastic new pedestrian and bike connectivity. But of course, there's you know, a destination for garages uh, at the ends of Christie, Ohlone, and, and Bay Street. But in very general terms, it's not anything unusual uh, at Bay and Ohlone. The, uh, traffic engineers that we've worked with are anticipating about 150 cars an hour uh, going southbound uh, in that kind of one lane, generous one lane uh, reopening of Bay Street. And if you look at it, that's like two and a half cars a minute. So that doesn't, it doesn't uh, surprise me at all. I, I think, you know, most barrier retail, retail streets are, are quite in excess of that. Okay, thank you all the questions I have. And the other commissioners have a question? I have a question. I have a question, Chair Keller. Sure, go ahead. So the walking through why you need to open up Bay Street to cars makes some amount of sense to me. Can we talk just briefly about those couple of parking spaces? I feel like in my impression of Bay Street is that little corner there um, with the large plaza is one of the few parts that's really working. Um, so if we could just get a little more information on that, that would be great. Thank you. So is the question about uh, the teaser parking? Yeah, I guess I'm not familiar with this term teaser parking and just yeah. the whole thing. So it's literally like, it's, uh, it's sort of like an appetizer. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's really, it serves as a visual, it's almost more signage than functional. So it actually, of course it is parking, but what it does is it tells you that there's more parking there and it tells you to keep on going. Um, and just grocery stores across the country use teaser parking uh, as a way of communicating to people. Uh, you may not even be conscious of it, but that, that that's where the parking is. So you try, you, you are drawn to the parking, you, you'll probably you'll probably be full most of the time, but that's why the, there's two ways up, just to the right. So it it is a uh, it's something that every uh, brand that we work with uh, wants, which is teaser parking. And and we we pushed the bulk of it around the corner, so away from that the first throw uh, along um, the, the northern part of Bay Street, where right after the speed table. Uh, and collected it all around the around the southern portion. Am I, am I answering your question, Henry? Yeah, that that makes okay. sense. Thanks so much. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? 
question? I was trying to unmute myself and I turned off my camera. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so kind of piggybacking off of uh, Commissioner Simon's question, did your team study using the existing parking structure that that's there, that's really close to this uh, parcel? And if so, why not use what's already there in place? Yeah, it's interesting how finicky retail is. Um, just the slightest perturbation can drop sales and make make the slightest inconvenience can, can cause people to second guess and go somewhere else. Uh, so we, we really go through great efforts to make the parking on top of, immediately adjacent to or underneath the front door. So we just think like, how do you, how do you, how do you see the store? How do you get into the store? How do you get out of your car? How do you go from your car to the front door to the cart? All that stuff has to be seamless. So putting it across the street and walking with bags, you know, if you've got kids, you've got a couple bags, you know, milk and water and stuff like that. Um, it just becomes a, an obstacle to, to customers' preferences. So it, 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 bottom line is it really doesn't work for a grocery store. I, I would I would add one point, and that is that this model that we've that we've adopted here is really an urban model, and that if you look at the the competitive grocers in the in the market, they're all surface level parking. So um, it's total suburban surface level parking, and in order for the, us to get a grocer interested in this site, we were able to get them to work with us on the rooftop parking piece, which is what you typically see in an urban environment, but they need some small amount of at-grade parking. So we are able to get it down to a very minimal amount if you think about it in comparison to, say, the Safeway or the Trader Joe's or, or the other grocery stores that have all surface parking. Thank you. Oh, sure. Commissioner uh, Gitsomi. Yes, I'm just curious, um, particularly since uh, you were discussing earlier the idea of backing up in the uh, up ramp um, in the northeast corner. Is there a reason why that's only one lane and could it possibly be two lanes? Um, could it be two lanes? I think that's I think that is more of a busy pedestrian crossing. So we want to have the more cars crossing the sidewalk around the corner and have fewer up across from the uh, the, the new plaza, the new bridge landing plaza. It's almost like that first ramp is a teaser ramp to the main ramp around the corner. I don't think we lost Commissioner Gutierrez. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, then uh, we'll open the uh, meeting up to public comment. Uh, Charlie, do we have some people wishing to speak, either by speaker card or raise hands? Yes, we do. Um, let me just read the COVID script part uh, for that. Now is the time for public comments on this item. Anyone who wishes to make comments related to this item should have begun submitting your online speaker card by now. Three minutes will be allowed for the Planning Commission Secretary to read your comments into the record. If you are participating in tonight's meeting via Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature visible on your screen, or if you are calling in, press star nine, and the Secretary will call on you at the appropriate time. At this time, uh, we will check whether any comments have been received via the online comment card or whether anyone has raised their hand to make audio comments. I have several online comment cards and there are three raised hands at the moment. Um, the online comment cards are from Bobby Lee, Rod Henme, um, and Lisa Findlay. <coughs> And uh, I will note that Bobby Lee has also submitted a uh, 
a letter uh, or written lengthy written comments just via email, which he has sent to all of the commissioners. So you should, you should have that. And he's also one of the uh, people in attendance who has raised their hands. Uh, and he did say in his speaker card that if he were in attendance, he would make his comments verbally. Um, so uh, with your permission, Chair Killer, I will simply call on the people with the raised hands first. Yeah, let's, and, let's do that and then we'll do the, the speak, you know, we'll have you read the speaker card. So just remind everyone, we're gonna strict, stick to a strict three minutes. So please keep your comments concise so we can move on to the other people who wish to speak. So three minutes is your limit. All right, and I'm gonna call on Bobby Lee first, and you can go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, good evening, commissioners. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to say that this is an incredible opportunity to bring a grocery store into this property and this growing community. It's a transformative project. Um, with uh, Center Cal here on the property now, uh, they have been uh, really great in engaging uh, our residents and uh, our, as an HOA board member, our HOA as well, in the operations of the property. Uh, we are very, very excited to work with them and to see the level of improvements and uh, proposals they put forth, uh, including this grocery store. So this is uh, a really uh, a great change from uh, you know UBS and Madison Marquette previously. So I, I think you, uh, as a city, you have a partner that is truly invested in uh, bettering Bay Street and making it a first-class property again. So I, I just wanted to, off the top, to say that uh, you know because it, it is amazing uh, what uh, what they've. Uh, engage us on so far um you know beyond that there uh, were a few concerns i had with this uh this proposal i think there's a uh, there's ways we can improve it uh overall uh and you know i've, I've written a, a lot of details in my comments to commissioners i urge you to to take a little bit more detail than, and i don't have all the time to go through it but you know with with parking uh this is a tricky area and i get why there's rooftop parking um and i think the circulation around the property is going to be really, really key. Um, you know, for those who have tried to visit Bay Street during the holidays pre-COVID and even on the weekends, you know that the backup from Maloney onto Shell Mound is absolutely crazy. It, it, it uh, hurts shoppers getting in there and it really slows down AC Transit and uh, Emory Go Route. As the chair of the ETMA, uh, I can uh, attest to the fact that our riders are very sensitive, even a couple minute delay. So if you can imagine a backup coming out of that up ramp uh, off of the uh, off of uh, Ohlone and back up on the shell mound, which you know today there is that backup that happens, um, that would delay a lot of um, a lot of the buses uh, coming through Shell Mound Street. So that's one thing to consider. Um, another thing is the a grocery loading zone area. Um, I, I I have a hard time envisioning a tractor trailer being able to move at a loading zone onto Shell Mound uh, without delaying or blocking the roadway. I, I would be very curious to see how the movement of that looks like. Um, I also have uh, reservations about the plaza relocation. I'm, I'm glad to see the staff has uh, proposed uh, putting that, uh, keeping that around parcel A and B, and I urge you to read more details about it in my letter. Um, and uh, beyond that, uh, you know, the last thing is I just want to make sure that uh, that we don't end up in a, in a new season's market situation where a property is built, but the grocer pulls out the last minute. Um, I, I really hope a grocery store does come to Bay Street and all of my neighbors I, that I've spoken to are really excited for it as well. So thank you very much. Perfect timing. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate the comments. Um, Next speaker is Christine Romano. And, whoa, what just happened? Oh no. Um, my Zoom is freezing again. Ty, can you allow Christine Romano to speak? Yes, give me one second. Thank you. Um, I think I might be unmuted. Can you guys hear me? Sounds like you are. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, well, well, thank you so much, commissioners, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I just want to say that I'm a resident of Bay Street. I live in the apartment complexes that are here. And, um, you know, like Bobby before me, I'm, I'm also very excited about the possibility of having a grocery store here because I think it, it would be really helpful and very convenient. Um, I, too, have some concerns. 
Um, first of all, I, I am a little bit worried about the loss of the plaza space because I really do like having you know outdoor space. Um, it's just it's just very nice. The um, planners already talked about some of the the different ways they're trying to incorporate more outdoor space into Bay Street, um, but I thought a lot of their selling points involved. Um, the pedestrian bridge being open and having that pedestrian bridge landing area open. Um, but the pedestrian bridge, from my point of view, seems like it's kind of behind schedule. I know some of that's COVID related, but I'm actually wondering if they have any updates or, or you know, how, how realistic their plans to finish that bridge in a timely way are and get it up and running before the grocery store is finished. Um, and then I also wanted to express some concerns, like, like Bobby already mentioned, about the level of, of traffic, both vehicular, bicycle, and pedestrian traffic that I think this project's going to come through, or that I think this project will bring. Um, that, that intersection at Bay and Ohlone, I walk by at least twice a day, and I would argue that there's already a need for a traffic light there, especially on weekends and especially at busy periods. And I think that, especially with the with the addition of a grocery store, and especially with you know if and when that pedestrian bridge opens and brings in all that traffic, that you're that, that there's actually a, a a real safety potential safety hazard there if we don't install lights or if we don't do something else to um, to make that that area more safe. And so if the and I was a little concerned that some of the planners were um, I guess not taking that suggestion as seriously as I would have hoped because I mean I, I live here I see I see what happens. And so if, um, if they don't, aren't thinking of installing a traffic light at Bay and Ohlone or some kind of signal, I'm wondering what other measures that they're, they're considering or willing to consider to promote uh, safety as, you know, via the pedestrians slash bicycles and, and motor vehicles. Um, so th that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. Right. And then the next one is Rod Henme. And it appears that my Zoom is working again. So... Uh, Mr. Henry, you may go ahead and unmute. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good evening. My name is Rod Henry. I'm an architect and a resident on Christie. Very familiar with both Ken and Marco's work, um, and and uh, I, I think this is a, a good scheme and has a sound foundation and many aspects that I think are positive. However, I very much uh, support the staff's recommendation to um, provide plaza space between the building and the raised um, uh, dining terrace uh, for a couple reasons. One is um, all of the open space that's, pro that's proposed in the current scheme is all basically widened sidewalks. And to have a space that actually spans um, as it is now, so uh, for many years, that street has been closed, and, and those of us from Memoryville have gotten used to that being public space as well. And I think it would support the grocery store to have the people be able to move across the street uh, from the dining terrace to the grocery store easily without having to um, you know, go to a crosswalk or whatever. And secondly, I think it's a brilliant idea to make the grand staircase and to cut off the walkway that goes across. So now you have a staircase that's opened up. And imagine a sizable open space, not just a sidewalk in front of that staircase, but a sizable open space opposite that stair. That would make a great amphitheater. You could have performances, people sitting on the stairs. Um, and, and so I think that's, that can be addressed. Secondly, I think you can address the traffic. Uh, it might need cul-de-sacs on both ends of the street. Or an alternative and perhaps a compromise would be to eliminate the parking on the east side of the market and just take it down to one lane wide and push that street all the way away from the grand staircase. So you have a, essentially a plaza that can be created by the widening of the sidewalk. Um, but I, I think overall it's a, it's, a good, it's a good project and I support it and I hope that we can, uh, that the project can provide much more open space in the area where we need it, which is at that end of the site. That's really, um, you know, the, the movie theaters, the uh, food terrace, all of that um, with the grocery store. So, thank you. Alrighty, thank you very much. Any um, other live speakers? I do not see any more raised hands among the attendees. Uh, let me check. Mr. Um, Hemi, can you, Mr. Hemi, can you mute your microphone, please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, have not received any more online speaker cards. Uh, let's see. So, I have three. 
Uh, two were from Bobby Lee and Ron Henmy, who have already spoken. And the third is from Lisa Findlay, who I did not see in the attendee list. And she did not, in any event, even if she is here, she has not raised her hand. So I will go ahead and read her online speaker card. Great, thank you. It says, wonderful to see the work to revitalize Bay Street. Grocery store will be welcome and the parts of the proposal that m modify and enliven the street are welcome. Daylighting the stair up to the food terrace is a great idea, as is the bike connection from the railroad bridge to Shell Mound. A few concerns. The Bay Street Plaza is the only paved, wind-protected outdoor gathering space in Emeryville, and it is well used. In addition, Bay Street from the corner of Ohlone Way South to the parking lot across at Shellmount has been closed to regular car traffic for years, making it a kind of de facto pedestrian public space already. I support the staff proposal to turn Bay Street south of Ohlone Way into a new plaza by closing the street and eliminating the parking. Why not take this one step further and take the plaza all the way to Ohlone Way to connect the railroad bridge plaza drawn in the plans to the plaza that the staff proposes? Fire truck access can be provided, as it is now, by retractable bollards. This would also remove the parking deck access next to the creek from this part of Bay Street and greatly reduce traffic at Bay Street and Ohlone Way, as well as car and pedestrian bike conflicts at that corner. To continue to protect pedestrians and with the proposed new plaza blocking cars from connecting through, the new plaza should extend to, make, to take in the base of the stairs at Uniqlo that connects to the cinema and the Barnes and Noble Cafe. This completes the pedestrian loop and safe space while also supporting the teaser parking. Finally, I have noticed recently that the length of Bay Street has become the location of daytime cruising, not sure about nighttime, question mark. The traffic calming move of bumped out seating along the street that is suggested in the plan will help this situation. Maybe also speed bumps or other design ideas to make this less attractive, question mark. And that is the end of her comment. And that is all of the online speaker cards. I would note that, let's see, we do have three emails that were sent to the commission uh, with fairly extensive comments from Sunny Lau, uh, LAU, uh, Sherwin Lau, LAU, and Bobby Lee. And the commissioners should all have those comment uh, emails in your email. I, so I, I have seen those, so we, I think we have received them, besides I've seen all three of them. So I believe that is the extent of the public comments on this item. Okay, and since we're not seeing any more raised hands, I will close the public comment portion and bring it back to the commission. Um, I think what I'll do is call on commissioners to get their comments and that will be kind of keep it orderly and keep it moving. So the first one I see, um, uh, Charlie or uh, Ty, can you uh, demote the speakers so we oh. have fewer people on the screen? I can't okay. see everybody. Uh, sure. Okay. Do you? While we're doing that, I'll call on Commissioner Simons, your comments. Okay, excellent. Well, first I just want to say thank you so much to staff and for all the presenters for all the time um, they've put into this project. Um, I think, and also from the excellent comments we got from the public, um, I'm in general supportive of doing, putting a grocery store here um, at Bay Street. Um, seems like everybody generally is. Um, I think my one concern <clears throat> is the parking. Um, and losing that really nice, sunny, activated space. I think of the whole part of Bay Street, that's the only part that's really south facing. Um, and one of the nice parts to spend time in. So if these spaces are really irrelevant or not that useful just to show people they exist, why not cut it in half? Um, looks like there's eight or 10 spaces there. Maybe we could do four or three, um, just because I think it's really wide open community space that really works um, for members of the public. <clears throat> Um, I think I'd also just like to say that um, <clears throat> that I think the um, that I think we're going to have to really carefully monitor pedestrian inter and vehicle interaction um, at the intersection. We there's a lot of discussion about 
end up potentially putting in the light there seems like a good way to make sure we're keep, keeping folks safer. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Commissioner Graham. Thank you so much for the presentation. It was perfect. And thank you for the time you put in the document. Um, I think the portion of the improvements other than grocery store is very welcome and they're very positive on the community and uh, follows the general plan. But the grocery store there, I think the traffic brings and the type of users are of what we have here and what uh, they put there. I think the grocery store people are people who are rush, they just want to go there do shopping and get out. And they're not going to be in that type of traffic that we are looking for having this space. Plus, in other area, I've been there a couple of times and I see how people are using that. Uh, they have salsa classes, they have a different type of gatherings there and removing them, put some um, parking there, I don't think it's going to be a good fit there. Um, and plus, if you want to have grocery, uh, there are options. Uh, I've seen it many places, they call it markets, smaller markets that are smaller, shoppers go there, maybe it doesn't have any parking. Um, they're very popular in San Francisco. Um, and that can bring the uh, people who you want to use the other spaces to. Um, and as the other uh, commissioners mentioned, maybe the parking that is already there can be helpful, especially if it's not paid. <laughs> I see many people don't use these spaces uh, over there, including AMC theater, because of the paid parking. Like I call my friends and say, hey, you want to go to uh, AMC, watch some movie? So, oh, we need to pay for parking. We have AMC membership, but we need to pay for parking. So, um, in general, the other portions are perfect. They're very welcome, but the users so removing the buildings there and doing uh, those so is a little bit question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Gitsoni. Um, Yes, first I'd like to thank the staff for all their work on this and also thank you for the presentation. Um, it, it's very informative and I appreciate that. Um, I think like a lot of people, I think that the grocery store seems like a very good thing to have in this area. It's certainly something there's local demand for and the ability of it to take a, an area that seems to be struggling a little bit and uh, inject some life into that is good. Um, I'd like to see that happen in a way that uh, people who live in the immediate area feel is an asset and not a detriment. Um, I did, we did see some comments about uh, the changes near Brunswick Lane and how that might change accessibility for people who are residents of the local apartments. And I'd like to see some sort of study or assurance that that's not going to be an issue. Um, I also um, am a little concerned with the bikeway that I see going by Alonian Bay and I can see a lot of traffic it looks like will be going across that. Um, safety there would be an issue and also um, I think it would be useful to have a clear distinction between what is a pedestrian and what is a bicycle shop uh, area there um, just because of often in biking and through areas like that people will let dogs run across on leashes and things unless people really have an understanding that this bike traffic is here and pedestrian traffic is there adding that to an intersection with a lot of cars going through it just seems like it could be problematic and um, I also um, would echo other people's concerns about the plaza. I think the plaza that exists there now is a very popular, well-used space. It definitely is an asset to the community. I like the staff's idea of relocating it to the south end of Bay Street. Um, I do understand that that would cause a traffic issue um, in terms of the teaser parking and things like that, but if there's a way to work around that, I think that would be ideal. I think preserving it, and there is talk of distributed um, open space, but as was mentioned earlier, to just call widened sidewalks that open space is not necessarily the greatest thing, but I think leveraging some plaza space, particularly near the newly opened staircase, would be great. Um, those are my comments at the moment, and uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And Vice Chairman Woods. 
Uh, thank you, everyone, for the presentation. This was a really great uh, presentation. It gave, gave us really good visuals of what to expect. Um, I also want to thank the public for their comments. Um, they said a lot of things that I was uh, thinking about. Um, I'm in full support of having a grocery store at this location. I think it'll be great for this location and for the residents that live there on Bay Street. Um, but I am concerned about the vehicle, pedestrian, and bicycle circulation, which seems to all cross. And there's not really, um, uh, as Commissioner Gazzoni said, a clear separation of, of these three types of, of um, commuters. And so I would also like to see you further develop the circulation and improve it to make it safer for the pedestrians and the cyclists that, that um, go there. Um, I walked through that area um, and prior to COVID, there were events that were hosted in the plaza and you really need a large space for events like having live music, we would have salsa dancing there, we would have yoga in the plaza. And even though you are trying to provide these other distributed outdoor spaces, it's nothing like having a large area where you could have events like this. Um, so I would also encourage you to um, possibly reconsider having vehicles uh, go through there and basically cut off a really safe area where children play. I, whenever I walk through there, I walk to Uniqlo or any one of those uh, retail stores, I'm always having to watch what, you know, when I'm walking because there's always children playing there, running across, and it's completely safe for them to be doing that. And I would really hate to see that be taken away from that, that area right there. So um, I think there, I think it's, having the grocery store there is great, but I think we need to improve on the circulation. Um, let me see what other notes I have here. Um, I mean, I think everything else that I have in my notes has, have already, has already been said and commented on, um, but I'm, I am excited and to see a grocery store come to Bay Street. Um, I really think it's going to be a great addition to Emeryville. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, so I hope that the, the project people are, are hearing the message that everyone is, is, is support of the grocery store. I too I am as well. Um, I do appreciate the presentation. I appreciate staff's work and input on this. I think what we're hearing and what I'm going to reiterate is that the plaza area is key to the functionality of this being a community gathering space. And I would hope that you're hearing that loud and clear. I think staff has provided you a, a alternative um, for doing that, and I think there's uh, many compromises we could do. Um, I found it interesting that you called this an urban environment, but yet you still want parking in front of the store. It's still, the thing is still very car centric. And I don't think vehicles, when you talk about an urban environment that promotes biking and pedestrian while increasing vehicle traffic, I think that's in opposition to each other. So Charlie, if you could bring up that um, illustration I created. <clears throat> I'd like to just show you guys one, um, Certainly, uh, it'll take, hang on, it'll take me yeah. a second. But there's, there's several compromises we can make with this, but I think through traffic uh, on that part of Bay Street is, from what I'm hearing from the commission and the public is a, non, is a non-starter. Um, and while Charlie is doing this, um, I'd like to just bring your attention to three grocery stores in the area that have rooftop parking as you do. They all have as much or more parking on the roof than you do, but we have Sprouts on, um, uh, Broadway in um, Oakland that has uh, upstairs parking. They only have one entrance and exit point. The Whole Foods in downtown Oakland has 130 spots on their garage. They have one entrance and exit point. And the Safeway on Broadway in Pleasant Valley, huge grocery store, huge surface parking lot, but they have 158 parking on top of their roof. They have one entry and exit point. So I really think the Northern entry is moot and unnecessary. But at, a, at the worst case, if you feel that is necessary, then where you see at that entrance, you see the yellow blockade. I think the street should be blocked off there. And I think it should be blocked off 
and we do not provide the um, teaser parking. What you can do is expand the street there so we have four lanes, two lanes coming in and two lanes going out. Um, so there's full access, people can turn right or left as they leave, as they enter the uh, complex, they can go into the Bay Street shopping garage as they normally do, um, and, or they can come in and turn left and enter into your garage. I think a compromise that we could do is block off the northern. Um, I think Bay Street should be blocked off at alone. And I think we need a traffic signal there because the backup that you talk about going from Ohlone onto Shellman Street is basically created because the pedestrians don't give cars an opportunity. Pedestrians continue to flow off that street and cars back up because they can't get in. So I think a traffic signal will allow cars and pedestrians equal time to enter and exit. Whether we open Bay Street or not, I think that's a non-starter for me. We need a traffic signal there. But I think if you're adamant that you need the teaser parking, then we at least move the blockade back to the entry of the store where that island is and the whole eastern part of Bay Street is, is plaza as staff has, has directed. I don't think we need cars coming through there. Um, I'm willing to compromise and give you the, the teaser parking, um, but I don't think we... I would prefer to make the whole thing a plaza. I think serving people is what we need to start doing. We need to quit focusing on the automobile and it's going to be a hard lesson and there are the lab buildings all over town keep telling us they need all this parking but we are in a transit rich area and i understand grocery stores are more difficult but you have plenty of parking within the complex for people you have the eight uh, spaces in the low dock you can call those your teaser spaces if you want to make those more visible so i think you know let's let's work like a compromises there's a couple of ideas for you but i agree for me a minimum would be that we have the eastern side of the grocery store as a plaza and we do not have through traffic on the street. Whether we have the teaser parking is something we can talk about. And I do believe that the Ohlone Way um, designation for biking and pedestrians needs to be clarified. And I do believe we need traffic controls in there. But otherwise, you know, I'm excited about a grocery store. Um, if we do put this forward, I'm gonna require conditional approval that this is only for a grocery store and nothing else. Um, and I want to base our decision on what you're planning in each phase. I don't want to have a promise of parklets further down in the complex more northern of the shopping center at a future time. I don't want to lose a, a plaza and then you guys sell the project and a new project comes along and they don't develop what you had in mind and we lose everything. So I'm going to focus on what each project is proposing and that will work unfortunately in a silo I like the idea of parklets farther on down the, the uh, Bay Street, but unless it's tied to this project, unless you're going to do it when you do this project, I don't want to consider that open space and replacing the open space that you're taking away. So that's kind of all my uh, comments is that, you know, I think we're all in support of the grocery store. Uh, we just all value that plaza area and we want to do the best we can to keep at least a good portion of that. So are there any other comments from the commissioner before we close the item? I will stop yeah. sharing the screen with your permission, okay. Chair Kelly. Yep, yeah, that's fine, thank you. And are there any questions or anything from uh, commission? Staff, do you need anything from us? Um, I don't need anything further. Miru, do you need anything further? Okay. How about the applicant? Uh, we need to promote them again if you want to hear back from them. I just if one or two of them have any questions or comments. Uh, let me let me uh, bring Mr. Ramey back, and he can tell me if he needs anybody else. Zoom seems to take a minute to think about these things. Try again. Well, you know what? I'm just going to ask him to unmute. Oh, there he is. Okay. Mr. Ramey, would you like to unmute and uh, address the commission and ask to let them know if you need any further direction? Um, no, I mean, first of all, I appreciate all the comments and, and we, um, you know, the comments about the pedestrians and the uh, bicycles and the vehicles were super 
focus on that and, and agree with everybody that that's we've got to make sure that we study and have a very safe environment there um what's really of you know one of the things is you've got the bridge coming over and we hope there's a lot of bicyclists coming over on the bridge right and right now there's really nowhere for them to to go i mean there's no cycle tracks there's no connectivity so we feel like it's really important that we add that connectivity um but also agree that that uh, having a safe uh, environment uh, is, is is absolutely critical. So we're in total agreement with that. And it probably needs, and we're happy to go back and do some more studies. Um, our, tra our traffic engineers have, have uh, provided feedback that would say that putting a signal there would be the wrong thing to do, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't go back and study it some more. So as far as the plaza areas, um, you know, I understand uh, your comments. Um, it's really a function of, of um, trying to weigh the needs of what we think is best, um, what you guys think is best, and then what's acceptable to the grocer, right? It, and that's always the art, not the science of all this. So um, I think cutting, you know, cutting off part of uh, Bay Street to make it um, a plaza like Charlie suggested in his um, in his diagrams uh, or something we can look at. Um, so I can't give you an answer on any of that tonight. Of course, we understand that. I mean, we're just kind of giving you what, what yeah. we kind of see is important. But one thing I would like to just to address with you with your traffic planners, your traffic planners are probably used to looking at just basic streets. But Ohlone Way is not only the access to the Bay Street shopping centers, you know, it's also the entrance point to the parking of the Avenue um, apartment buildings. Yeah. So, and what happens, and I see it all the time, is the pedestrians create a blockade and cars cannot get through because yeah. they just never stop and never get, and I don't think traffic people study that. Unless you go out to that location of Bay Street and monitor it, you're not gonna think that is a, a critical problem. But this is a problem in that area. And so traffic backs up to Ohlone, then it backs up into Shell Mound Street. I think a signal would provide everybody equal opportunity to cross the street and then that would alleviate the traffic. So if you're going to have a study, I'd ask them to look at that a little bit more closely. Yeah, no, no question. And, and, and I love all your positive thinking because having it be such a busy place that we need a signal would be awesome. Right. So we're all hoping for it. That, that would be awesome because right now you, you you would not right so um but but whether whether it's a signal or whatever we do we we, we absolutely want to have it be a safe environment we want to see bicycle bicyclists go through there pedestrians uh vehicles i mean we know you can we know that it can all work we're positive of that um and it's critical time and time is critical um the project um unfortunately has had some some rough times and um, time is not our friend. So it's, it's, it's one of those things, what's that old saying? Uh, take your time, but be in a hurry. Be thoughtful. We want, you know, we want to be thoughtful. Uh, we want to work with the stakeholders. We, we've done a tremendous job, I think, of outreach um, to the condos and the apartments and the tenants and, and the apartments on the other side of the bridge. And, and uh, we'll continue to do that for sure, because we want to be part of the community uh, we want it to be very successful um, and safe. So I think we all have the same goals and objectives. Uh, it's just a matter of, of trying to find out what can work um, and, and what a grocer will accept. We've talked a lot about a grocer tonight, and, and that's because that's part of our proposal, but it's really trying to make the whole project a thriving project. And right now it's just not. Um, so some some changes need to be made, um, and we're hopeful that we can work our way through and, and uh, execute sooner rather than later. Sounds like you have a good roadmap so far. We just got to get all our ducks in a row. Chair Keller. Yes. If I may, staff does have one clarifying question for the commission, which okay. is somewhat somewhat fundamental. It, it relates to the to uh, the, the uh, discussion questions that we posed about a PDP amendment. Uh, 
I don't want to put words in the commission's mouth, of course, but I, what I'm hearing, I believe, from, and correct me if I'm wrong, from all of you is that you support the grocery store, but you also support retaining a plaza of some sort. That's correct, because like you guys have mentioned, the plaza has always been part of the original PD. And so, if they change that, then they're changing the PD. So, so to carry that one step further, again, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I'm trying to infer from what you have said that you would not support an amendment to the PUD to eliminate the plaza, but that you might support an amendment to the, or you might support the relocation of the plaza as has been discussed and, and therefore determined that the PUD did not need to be amended because you would still have a plaza there, although it would be slightly moved. Is that a correct interpretation of your comments? I think so. When looking at the commissioner shaking their heads, I would think that the majority is saying yes, that's correct. Nodding their heads. Do, do you want yeah. us to? Do you want us to verbally affirm? Um, I don't know that we need that. I, th okay. I, th I think as long as nobody violently disagrees with what I just said, um, I think we can take that as your direction. And Christy is okay with that. Christine, you, is that real? Okay? Yeah, that's fine. I see the nodding heads as well. Okay. All right, that's all. We just wanted to be clear on that point. Okay, very good. So if that's everything, uh, we appreciate everyone's work and we will close this item and move on to the next, which I don't know that we can go any further. That is correct, uh, Chair Keller. Unfortunately, I have been in communication with Commissioner Zepko and have learned that she is ill tonight and not able to participate. Uh, that means we do not, unfortunately, have a quorum for the marketplace item. And so we will have to continue that item to your next meeting on October 28th. Bummer. Okay. All we can do about that. Hopefully, uh, we will try to make sure that we have a quorum at our next meeting for, <laughs> for this item. Yeah, because we have the two having to recuse, that kind of kids us short. So we have to make sure we have the room we can. Right. Okay, so we'll have to move on to planning commissioner comments. Do any of the commissioners have any comments? Okay. I'm not seeing any raised hands or anything. So then I guess we will. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Graham. I'm sorry. So, um, I, I, I was, uh, like seeing every, everybody talking about the grocery, larger grocery uh, shops. I see uh, people who are driving. They have more than three options around that location in five minutes drive. May um, I just may I interject here that we are we finished the Bay Street grocery store oh, item, sorry. so we shouldn't be discussing that any further. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay, you want to wrap up all your comments within the, the item before we close that item. Because people in the audience who are interested in this item may have left, and then they wouldn't hear your comments. Any comments on items not on the agenda? Already not seeing any. I guess we can adjourn the meeting at 828. And I thank everyone and apologize to the marketplace for not being able to hear their item tonight. I'm just looking forward to that. Yes. Apologies from staff as well. And